This PC build series is brought to you by Antec, Apotop, and Patriot Memory. Hello everybody, it's Brian for GadgetUnit.com and it's time for part 13 of my $500 triple boot PC build series. And in this part, we will be installing macOS 10.10.3. So the only real catch to this is that I used my MacBook Air, which already runs OS X to prepare the USB drive and all of those things. You could also use a Windows PC if you have VMware and you have the proper Intel processor to run OS X inside of a virtual machine for the sake of preparing your USB drive. So there is a great guide on TonyMacX86.com which I will follow for the majority of this particular process which starts by downloading Yosemite which is free from the Mac OS X App Store. The majority of this guide is pretty self-explanatory, I think, because it's actually written very well. So after you download Yosemite, go ahead and open up Disk Utility, which is typically in your Utilities folder, and then go ahead and click on your flash drive in the left sidebar, go to the Partition tab at the top, go to One Partition, make sure it is the GUID Partition Scheme, give it a label, so for this we just call it USB, and go ahead and format everything. After you do that, we need to go ahead and open up Terminal and run a command, which goes ahead and prepares the actual flash drive with the Yosemite install before we install a bootloader and a couple of other things. So it may take a couple minutes for everything to transfer over, and then after that we have to go ahead and install the bootloader, which is called Clover, and then there is actually a second part to this process in part 14, which we will get to. So once you download Clover, go ahead and open up the installer, choose the options that you see on your screen, go ahead and make sure you click on your flash drive, and then go to install. So now that the bootloader is installed, we have a couple of extra files that we have to copy over to the flash drive, as you can see on your screen now. I'm just trying to keep this video a bit short, since this is actually, like I said, a very well written guide to where you could probably just open that up and be able to follow it in a more efficient manner. So once you finish copying over the extra files that we need for the installation process, you can actually go ahead and reboot into the flash drive, similar to how we used the boot process for Windows and Ubuntu. So from the F11 boot menu, like usual, go ahead and choose the UEFI option for your USB flash drive. And then from there, you will be at the Clover bootloader. Go ahead and select the Mac OS X partition, or the, excuse me, the install Mac OS X partition. And then we can go ahead and go into Disk Utility. So for Disk Utility here, you just need to click on the partition that we made earlier in the Windows installer. Go to the Erase tab at the top. Make sure you choose Mac OS X Extended Journaled. And then you can go ahead and give it a label. For this example, I give it Yosemite. And you can go ahead and format it like you did previously. And then we could go ahead and install Yosemite to that partition like we normally would. This process does take a while, a good 20 minutes. At one point, the installer will restart your machine, in which case you have to go to the Clover boot menu. But this time, instead of choosing the Boot OS X install option, go ahead and choose your actual Yosemite partition that you just formatted within the installer and then it will go ahead and continue the installation process. Once you're at the actual setup process for the post installation for Yosemite, you could go ahead and fill out the information like you typically would for an OS X installation. If you've never done it before, then it's very self-explanatory. Once you're at your desktop, we have to go ahead and install Clover to your EFI boot partition. So you could just use the same copy of Clover that you downloaded earlier, assuming you copied it to your flash drive. I forgot to mention that and it will go ahead and install Clover to your EFI partition that you made way back when in the Windows installer, that 250 meg partition that we made. It will go ahead and do it automatically, and then of course there are a couple of KEXT files and some other options that we have to transfer over like before. And then once you go ahead and reboot, you are mostly good to go. 
Now you will notice that you won't be able to boot your Yosemite partition without your flash drive being plugged in. That's because we have to go through a couple of extra options to make sure that we can boot all three operating systems from one bootloader without requiring some USB flash drive. That, like I said, will be coming in the next video. So the final step within Yosemite itself is to install some extra drivers. So we need a driver for our audio. We also have to install the ethernet driver in addition to installing the trim patch for our SSD for garbage collection purposes. All of this is done through MultiBeast, which you can find also on TonyMacX86.com. Once you reboot, ethernet should be working, audio should be working, and the video card is already getting graphics acceleration right out of the box, which is great. Now aside from the actual bootloader process that we're going to fix again in part 14, OS X is finished. It works really well. You can do anything you can do on a real Mac on this particular machine. There's only one thing I notice is that when you put it to sleep or standby, it doesn't actually turn the machine off. It's going to stay on, but if you push the power button, everything comes on instantly. So it's not exactly the same sleep mode you're used to from Windows and Ubuntu. So stay tuned for part 14 where we fix the boot process so that we can boot between the three operating systems perfectly without a USB flash drive. And that is it with this video.